Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Hope uh, you all had a great lunch. So, um, <coughs> today we are going to talk on an important, like now, an interesting topic actually, or an, or an opportunity for like, you know, for, in, in, we'll talk about two phases of the same, uh, same opportunity, and that's one reason like now we both of us are standing here to talk about how we can bring in students to Apache projects. So, we're going to cover the aspects of like, uh, from the student angle, from the academic angle, and also from the Apache po project point of view. So I'm Suresh Maru, I'm from Indiana University. Like uh, I'm also with academic, but academic uh, side of the, the, uh, the opportunity here, but I'll be presenting more on the Apache projects point of view, from a project management committee point of view. How do we want, like now, how do we want to engage with the student? What do we <coughs> expect from the students and so on? And, and uh, yeah. I'm uh, Shahani Veeravarna. Uh, I'm from you know, the University of Maratua in Sri Lanka. And I will be talking from the student's point of view or from the academic point of view. Yeah. So uh, again, uh, the idea is here, we don't want to run through some slides, but basically like you know, have a good discussion on and some constructive action items, what we can do and how we can bring in engage students with Apache project. So feel free to interrupt anytime and uh, we want to like do it more like a discussion forum here. So the first one is like now Shani nicely reminded us like of the morning's keynote here, the topic here like an ASF is special and the Apache brain trust is unparalleled. So here like now what do we take, a good take home point from this keynote, uh, from this uh, statement if you can see is, yes the brain trust has been unparalleled and we have a lot of this and how do we broaden this up, how do we expand this, how do we take it to the students and how do we even broaden, bring in more fresh brain trust into yeah. this whole process? S students all around the world. Yeah. So, um, first, like, I guess we'll uh, like to focus on the talk specifically on like the new, like uh, newer aspects, the new students' academic aspect. But before we go into details, we'll just cover like, you know, a uh, couple of efforts in the areas like, you know, what, like, you know, how they've been engaging students, especially. So the first one has been, uh, it's called STEM track. It's been a really related to new effort, but it's been like, you know, taking off really nicely. It's been helping basically various students to engage in the science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics field here. Like basically the STEM track effort, what it does is it has a lot of op mentors and projects and then advisors and then like basically the students apply, students from various all around the world apply saying that I want to go to a particular conference in this area, I want to learn, I'm an undergraduate student, graduate high school and say oh, I, want to, I want to get exposed but many a times we, we get limited with this travel funding. So uh, how do we do that? So the whole STEM track has a donation, donor base, mainly give the donated donations to help out with these students and the STEM track bridges them. And then like you now I'll discuss a little more on the paid forward aspect but basically I have a bank of all the conferences and interesting ideas and the donors and then like my, do the matchmaking with the students and then send them to various conferences. Uh, I can talk a little, little more detail uh, offline also on like you know, how this has been successful uh, and so on but you know an interesting topic like you know, interesting idea like the what the STEM track has pushed it is called paid forward. The students get benefited, they go travel. But now what do you do? What do you do give back? Like you know, the students are encouraged to go back to their community, share their learning. These travels are expensive and even all the federal funding and especially in the US universities what we are seeing is we are seeing a huge cut in this travel funding. When the students get this opportunity, how do we scale that? So the students are encouraged to go back, contribute, write white papers about it, what they have learned, about a particular like meeting what they have learned or a particular conference. Uh, and also like you know, volunteer, volunteer to become mentors for the future students and so on. So if we, uh, this again, like uh, Simplex is focused on the travel aspects, but you know, if you look back, like you know, the Google Summer of Code, like you know, I'm sure like many of you have been involved with Google Summer of Code. Do we have any students who participated in GSOC? Yeah, I'm sure like any mentors who participated in GSOC? Yeah, great. So basically like, you know, so <coughs> don't just in too much detail, but basically we have Norin here who administered the GSOC program and like you now started in Apache from a while now. So Google like uh, nicely generously is conducting this program and then it's encouraging various college students to participate in open source software development. So this is giving uh, very interesting opportunities for the students and especially young developers and teaching them how to engage with open source project and more importantly they get paid. The student get paid to do that and also like you know, they contribute to this real world software development and more importantly learn the open source culture 
like right from early on, right from their academic uh, culture, like you know, they're learning like you know, how to contribute to open source, like how to uh, work with others, and a lot of various aspects. So an important aspect here is uh, the, uh, the GSOC, like, you know, as, has been very global in nature. You know, they've been engaging both the students and projects worldwide. We'll not go into too many details here, but an interesting aspect if you see is the number of countries, like you now in 2012, like 69 of them, and they've been like varying, but uh, mainly like you know, very many different countries are participating in it, many different universities, um, and so on. So. And, and, and if you consider the top schools, as you can see, the very first up there with 164 uh, number of students from uh, 2005 to 2012 is University of Morocco in Sri Lanka, and that's the university I'm affiliated with, and hence my interest in this, because we understand how far this can be taken and how many opportunities can be created. Uh, Sri Lanka being a developing country, still, we managed to do this, so there is a lot of potential. So, um, if you look back, like again, like talking on the two sides of even from the even from the GSOC project point of view, from the projects, if you see, like you know, we are getting the projects get a paid developer contributing and a paid committed developer because uh, they are graded and then, like you know, they have to pass the midterm evaluation, the final grade, so they are supposed to deliver the code to pass the thing, get the internship. So the project is getting. Uh, some nice paid developers and also more importantly they are getting fresh ideas new ideas and also attracting new members to the project community here and uh, from the student perspective it obviously is an opportunity to gain a real world experience in software development and in particular open source software development and when we all know what we mean by open source software development it's it's just not purely cutting code, you know, you have to work in a community, you have to collaborate, you have to, you know, communicate via email and that forces students whose first language is not English to, you know, improve their writing skills and, you know, communication skills. So there are lots of things that they learn just from these three months. And of course, uh, you know, one big incentive is the uh, payment you know, for three months, the amount that Google pays, it means a lot, especially when you translate it to, uh, uh, you know, a different country, uh, you know, <laughs> with a different level of economics. Um, and, uh, you know, the ability to network, it's all about exposure. A student, an undergraduate student or a graduate student from another country gets an opportunity to get exposed to a far larger community. And in, in but yet, within a structure, setting you know it's, it's not like wide open but they still they're forced to uh, kind of um, <coughs> communicate and therefore network with others and they become known and for them it's something you know very valuable so it's only three months but they achieve a lot in that three months so if you look back in statistics again, like you know, uh, the number of students, as you can see from the start, start of the program, has increased, but lately, like you know, uh, has kind of stabilized around like in a thousand. But more importantly, like if you see, like at least the Google kind of, I think, officially published on their website, they're trying to keep both the organizations and students conscious now, both for funding and also the manageability of the program. They're trying to keep around 1,200. Now, if you see this, yeah, uh, of course, like you know, fully appreciation to Google and by. Uh, they have certainly demonstrated a nice concept here and how students can benefit and all, but how do we take it? Like, you know, if we need to scale, as we increasingly see, like, you know, more and more students are increasing, so it is a worldwide. Worldwide, we are, also, we are talking about 1,200 students for one summer program, but lots of students would like to take the benefit of this, and it's basically helping their careers, helping them learn new software. So that's kind of also one of the ideas, like, you know, we want to discuss, but just so before that, like, you know, looking further into some more GSOC, if you can see, like, you know, um, uh, the GSOC students have done, certainly done well. They have done their project, they have passed. And there are some very good success stories, actually, also, the, some GSOC students, especially in the Apache, getting through the, uh, going beyond their commitership, like, beyond their project, earning commitment from project, and even, like, their examples of become members of the foundation. So they have become committed members of this foundation, and but that has not been a, a constant, like, you know, there have been, like, you no know, spikes here and there, but largely, if you see that, Many students do their projects and go back. 
so before like you now we look at this i guess like here we have a lot of improvement and a lot of things we can do from the pmc's point of view when we are and right the next year uh, google summer of code is right there on the corner so from the projects we can think about how do we uh, what do we do beyond just like executing the formality of gsoc like we need to teach them up front the firstly is i guess most of the pmc's might reflect this that the students who have been successful have been uh, engaged early on right instead of jumping off to the proposal if they know the project very well at least and even for the project point of view provide, provide tutorials and some basic documentation they come and learn and get familiar before they start their project and do, doing this kind of smaller step will keep them more welcome they think that okay yeah i'm taken more seriously and then they are given more projects and then they even their contributions are appreciated and welcomed and when they are merged back into the same code the core the student now get more committed and they get motivated so so i guess like some improvements we can take it even from the gsoc point of view from apache we have about 40 i think rolling can clarify the numbers but they kind of around 40 like 40 40 45 and that this year is 44 44 yeah so this project like you now we need to keep by like, you now we need to go back to statistics and see how many of these 44 students who are working with various apache projects have been retained as pmc members are getting interested so we should constantly i guess from the project's point of view try to see how we can improve And but like you know, we have seen like an you know, glimpses of that success. Like you know, we in the Apache era with the project have seen an example. Again, this is not only the key success, but like uh, general observation has been when students do projects which are cross cutting, which cross across Apache projects, they get more welcome. They create like you know uh, more confusion too. Like you know, who is actually mentoring? Like you know, how are they getting engaged with the, both the communities? Is an integration project or is, are they getting developed or they are using one project in another? But these have longer yield and more importantly when the projects don't have time to do a look at it for instance like you know we've been like a example have been in airavata and odt projects we know there is a lot of synergies we've been trying to look between the both the both the airavata community and the odt community has been looking at it but this gsoc like projects are a good opportunity the students come from a fresh eye look between them and link between this project so Going on to this specific example from a student, Melinda, um, who did a Airavata project, like an integrated Airavata with Apache Ware and talking to Apache Hadoop. So we kind of cross-linked it. So what what we uh, interesting story here is he just like you now uh, he he chose to do, do his project, but he quickly realized when he is doing this kind of integration of these projects, the fundamental architecture needs to be provided, like they need to be enhanced to do this integration. So uh, the student continued to contribute and then say. how can i make this like the core airavata architecture it's simple and extendable and like you know he engaged with the community oh here is some ideas like beyond my project like you know these are my suggestions like and even the the project management committee was very receptive and then they welcomed the idea and now they are back to the main trunk code base and like you know these are like you know not going to detail but like you know just uh, illustrating from a very high level perspective these are like you know the fine extension the student had done not just for a benefit this project but made way for lots of future extension for the project itself for future gsoc projects to be executed and so on so um, that, that's kind of the one of story but uh, we hope to see like you no know, more and more such like you no know, stories where students get engaged with the pmc is in apache but also like you now in airavata and odt we have little more going beyond the gsoc project as well yeah and so be uh, for the airavata project we uh, took a step you know gsoc has been successful but we were wondering how we could engage more students who uh, didn't fall into the gsoc timeline who didn't you know submit uh, by the deadline and so many other issues so that's when we started thinking about student research projects uh, based on airavata so uh, we tried this out at the university of morocco first we decided to try out some masters level research projects uh, what we did was we had an initial brainstorming session to come up with Uh, you know rough ideas we wanted to make sure the idea wasn't too detailed because the students creativity had to come in very much like the gsoc thing but these ideas had to be uh, rich enough that the student could do a research project ranging from like 1 to 2 years uh, that uh, so uh, for uh, for that purpose uh, it was not you know we took apache airavata apache rev apache odt and we started brainstorming some ideas Ideas. and then we documented the ideas in a in a first round i think we had about five 
ideas that we uh, put together and each idea had a very short description just a few sentences and uh, w what we did was then we published it to the MSc students master students uh, so it's it's uh, you know the students then have the option of selecting if they want to so out of the five ideas three students selected three ideas and uh, What's the notable difference between this approach with the GSOC approach is, of course, the length of time, right? We engage with the student for one, one or more years, right? Uh, we hope it will be less than two years because they're supposed to finish their MSc. Uh, and the other difference is that the student is now engaged with the project not from a perspective of being a paid software developer for a short period of time instead the students motivation is that they are doing uh, some academic research which will lead to the MSc right so in that context now they are uh, they are connected with an academic institution in this case the University of Moratua and the University of Moratua has its own deadlines it has its own milestones that the student has to satisfy right so the the MSc program at the university defines those deadlines and the milestones uh, such as you know you have to submit your research proposal by this day you have to do a literature review report by this day now a typical uh, student engagement with an open source project will not involve those things right but in this case this is additional learning for the student and it is since it's aligned with what they're supposed to do in the university and since the project is willing to allow the students to go along with that it's a win-win and the other uh, aspect is each of these students has a local supervisor so the local supervisor in this case was myself because i was back in sri lanka and i acted as their local supervisor or I am acting as their local supervisor but the student also has mentors the mentors are the mentors from the open source project like Suresh and uh, Chris Matman from uh, the ODT project oh hi so, uh, so th that's how it works um, and that was for, that was uh, one uh, thing we tried and so far it has been very successful right uh, but we also had a um, uh, project which was not entirely successful and we all uh, tried to reflect back and self try to figure out why it wasn't successful so yeah so the idea is like i guess the student project we are talking about it like you now these vary from various from like undergraduate to masters to capstone so they vary by nature but also by the student team and so on but what we've learned actually at least uh, here in this case was this is a fairly when you when students are executing these fairly substantial they are not always the success not being like sometimes code but sometimes may could be measured as the student learning open source but in any case but more importantly what we hear you have seen is the students are working on their academic uh, academic going through their academic cycle passing their grades and so on they should be like you know there should be a bridge they are they, they often get overwhelmed between oh what happens in the open source community between what they are being taught in the academic one so an important lesson here is the take home one is the local aspects of it like have a uh, more a committed member from the faculty or someone who at least he may not like you know need to know the project but at least needs to know the nature of this work and at least bridge that oh this you need to go back and engage with the community are you doing the communication the mailing list fine like at least tell them and then say are you talking to the, your mentor in the Apache project and so on? I, I mean, it's very important for us to understand that the students, especially if they are from a different country, a different culture and so on, they are not familiar with, you know, what it entails, what's entailed in, uh, you know, networking and so on. So they really initially need some hand-holding and if they are not performing or if they are not communicating as they should, they should be given a gentle nudge. And in, you know, the community, the PMC, the committers, the devilish people are not going to come to the student and say, look, we are not hearing from you. So there has to be somebody who nudges the student. Because in this case, remember, the student is not being paid to do this. It is almost, you know, uh, they are doing it as part of their academic uh, 
um, part of uh, what they do in the academic context. So therefore, that local person uh, providing the guidance to the student, we figured was the issue. So here, in this METCAT project, uh, when we reflected back, we realized that in that particular project, although there was a mentor in Sri Lanka, there was no local supervisor within the university who was familiar with this whole process and could guide the students like that. And that is what caused that kind of dropout. Yeah, so the basic, uh, basic idea coming back to the again uh, an open discussion forum, I guess like you now uh, with this context basically here like what we want to discuss is like you know, what from everyone's thoughts are both from the project management point of view or from the student, how do we engage this because this cut certainly demonstrates like you know both the GSOC projects and the STEM track and all these academic projects demonstrate like the students are going to benefit a lot like you know, both from this and also so how do we take these next steps and more importantly even if you take, I mean, there are like a lot of things we can improve. Of course, we need uh, all everything needs volunteers. The Apache, especially Norin and Lee and others, have been great in engaging and administering the program. But it's still, that's still overwhelming uh, for the student. If you come down to the Apache, especially they go to the Jira and they are pointed to this like various 60, 70 Jira issues. They need to go figure out like they are not self-explanatory. You say, oh, Apache, I know that this or details, how do this, but. Even like you know, we can do certain things like you know, how do we link the dope files when someone is coming and say, ah, I'm looking for a Java project. Do we have one? What is where do I go? I'm looking for like you know, doing something in a big data technology. I want to do something in a web space. Where do I go? I think like you know, that's one of the I think like you know, missing or uh, like uh, improvement like you know, we can so with little efforts we can do more importantly maybe a better maybe Jira may be a place or better C uh, CMS and so on. That's on the Apache side, with the GSOC side of it. But at least this, uh, the Moratova projects and all, like certainly have clear, like uh, demonstrating that even more, like you know, we can take it more further. Like you now, the GSOC will go year round; it will begin 40, but we have like now close to 150 projects. Like even like that doesn't even scale. Like one three projects get a PMC member from GSOC and so on. So, but there are lots of research ideas, even though. Uh, the, uh, we have a software communities. Uh, the students can come figure out the research aspects in those ID, in those projects, and then they can go back and then do uh, do their academic research projects based on them. So benefiting both the project and the student. So, so th that's kind of thought again. Like this, not um, this is just thought to start with right now. We want to take it more concrete step. But you know, so feel free to come in and then uh, interject here. So yeah, what so basically what we uh, are proposing is, and we would like to hear your feedback on this, is like a research project idea bank, right? Once again, it's just a few lines so that then the student can expand upon it. But it is like the initial, you know, guidance to the student, and then the student would figure out whether it's uh, something that interests them. And these research ideas should be significant enough so that it would be sufficient for a capstone project or an undergraduate group project that goes on for at least six months or a graduate student research project that goes on for one to two years. It has to be of that nature. And of course, it's not just about the idea bank. We also need a framework to support this whole thing. It has to be, the framework has to create win-win scenarios for both the uh, PMC members as well as the students. So just some thoughts here is, um, the, uh, it should be such that we harness the students' skills and interests. So um, I just mentioned it, uh, you have to make the project work re relevant and required from by aligning it with the academic cur curriculum. So the PMC members have to understand that these research projects, the students will go off and they will go and do the research. They will communicate with the com uh, with the community, but they have their own milestones and deadlines to meet. So they will be doing significant literature reviews and so on. Uh, and then uh, we would encourage them to share it with the community. Uh, but it's kind of different from what normally happens in the community. But it's still, you know, it's, it enhances everybody's knowledge as a result. 
and uh, there, there is also a sense of satisfaction and we have to uh, cr create a sense of satisfaction and a sense of achievement for the students by encouraging research publications, presentations at ApacheCon and similar conferences, uh, giving them commitership if they are sufficiently engaged and so on. So these are things that the PMC members or the people who give the ideas into the idea bank, they have to keep this in mind. You know, we have to make sure the student feels good. Yeah, so I, I think more important, I think we can take back the thoughts from the previous talk, delegate, delegate like a boss in open source community, because I think, uh, I, I think those are some uh, key spoil points like you know, for these kind of engagements in the sense, give, a, give them the scope, step back, let them like to see what it is, and then like you know, step in and then groom them, but like, you know, so that's interesting because that's kind of more needed because from the PMC perspective, like you know, they, yeah, they they take up a nice idea and then say, hey, I don't have time, but this is a nice wish list. Maybe our project could work with a NoSQL database, like the obvious, like many projects will look. They look it up and then say, what are the issues? What do we need to do? Or like, you no, know, I need to load balance, scale this thing. Like, you no, know, what what are the issues? Like, you know, some of those fundamental aspects. But even to more, even more uh, groundbreaking technological advancement, they can. Uh, they should learn to like put out like uh, instead of writing code also right, take some effort to put those ideas out just enough to see if they get picked up and if the students are getting engaged and interested like you no know, help them flesh out uh, flesh it out a little more oh maybe you could look at this more work with it more and even the uh, the students now they get uh, they get back I also like you know if you look back um, the students are getting uh, along with the satisfaction all the PMC members are also getting maybe like they're more motivated working with the student to publish those things like you know sometimes it's good for everyone to write a white paper or sometimes even more like conference papers and so on and also even present those as a standalone projects too but you know also more importantly like the Apache where I have the example go back like you now they come back to the mainstream and so on so Again, like uh, the projects has to be again uh, since they are from varying lens because various countries we are talking about like a broad range of academic curriculums here with various again broad range of students so they could be a varying lens varying expertise and also uh, there could be like a little bit software project but what motivates at least uh, from our experience what we have seen is they have to be a little more research oriented the students should have some kind of an exploratory task they should go by themselves and uh, look back uh, yeah in fact uh, what was typical with uh, our you know our, in our experience was initially um, uh, the students uh, posted on the dev list questions such as can you uh, guide me towards some papers on this topic uh, now that is not the typical kind of question you would get on the dev list but uh, because the PMC members knew that these students are doing this they they were very welcoming and they shared, uh, you know, potential publications that would be useful for the students and so on. Yeah, so along with like you know, all the research aspects also, also for the PMCs, like along with all the community engagement, all they do, they are also, we are teaching open source, like you know, we've heard these talks on Apache and all, along with the uh, an educational aspect and the education sense of satisfaction for all the project members, like you know, we, how we can do this and how we are creating, uh, creating the next generation workforce, especially in these night technological areas. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, of course, based on our experiences, we already know a potential best practice. That is the importance of having a local advisor or supervisor from the academic institution that the student is attached to. Uh, because uh, the PMC uh, mentors don't have the time uh, to, you know, be guiding the student through the learning curve and so on. It, you know, having a local supervisor or advisor eliminates that responsibility from the PMC mem mentors and it makes the student more comfortable as well and also the local supervisor would then en ensure that the student adheres to the milestones and the deadlines and so on and if you look from the point of view of the local supervisor so why should a local what, what would motivate the local supervisor what's a win-win for them right and once again it's enhanced research collaboration uh, until uh, Suresh pointed out that that was uh, Chris Matman over there I have never met him <laughs> so, uh, it's just over the yeah, I'm Shahani and <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah so we see each other now but uh, you know our student has been collaborating <laughs> with you and with me so uh, that's just how it goes and of course the research publication so there is a win-win-win all around if we could kind of do this 
So uh, again, like uh, to leave it open for more thoughts on like you know, if there is any interest and how much most importantly like you now to hear from more uh, project PMCs here and to see like you now what kind of value or kind of what ideas we can do is but the, the general idea is I guess like you know, we can build upon what we had already in success in ASF from the GSOC perspective like you no know, more importantly do a little more uh, job by the PMCs with a, with a long payoff on to document our ideas like document our like the potential new ideas for someone to scratch uh, scratch through more uh, so basically in short like create a research bank or like you know we can uh, figure out a venue maybe the community uh, the comdev pmc is a venue uh, we can uh, take it up and then take it from there or and also figure out at least especially like you know from early on even i i was a little bit skeptical on will the local supervisors be motivated and so on but even like you know Recently, going back, and of course, Shani is coming back with a lot of experience by uh, the uh, the grassroots in the Shana, uh, the Sri Lanka, and even like now, I was trying to give these talks in India to various universities. How do we do? Oh, if you guys were means I was trying to basically project. These are the Apache projects you guys going to want to start engaging from now on. Don't wait until April, May before your GSOC starts. Start doing that. The response I've seen, and especially uh, the universities, is. They are more than welcome. The universities are interested. It's just not only the students are finding a volunteers. The institutions are interested because they want to get the opportunities for their students to go on. And the, obviously, the institution, especially in countries like India, where you have an overwhelming number of engineering schools and overwhelming number of students coming out, then they want the schools to be standing out, the students to stand out. So they they want to look out like all of this, like and especially and the Apache, of course, with the brand and all, it still takes it up. Like uh, Apache committers uh, themselves, like you know. Uh, like attract recruiters a big time. So the students like you know, that what the universities like, the students like it. So at least what we have seen is like you know certainly there is a lot of interest around. It's just like you know, we need to some uh, more volunteer uh, thing and also it's not going to be like happen just like that. But yeah. We've been talking. The PMCs also have to do that like you know figure out a model like you know how do we engage, how do they clarify more documentation of course. The introduction to Lawrence talk next one, like on the documentation. But well, I mean, the, these are things to be figured out. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, we, we need to discuss and see, you know, exactly what, uh, and there will be, you know, we will try something out and maybe it won't work, but we have to figure out what is the engagement model because you, you know, with the local supervisor, with the students, what will work because this is not GSOC, this is not short term, this is not paid, this is their academic research how can we facilitate it from an asf point or uh, standpoint because this is untapped potential i mean really need to do something about it yeah so again like um, more, uh, like this, at this point like you know we've been discussing more mostly based on experiences how we can take it from there but i guess like it's a good one will be to watch the community uh, mailing list and then start a discussion and see if we can take out and get more recruiters but so if you have precisely any specific uh, suggestions or goals or like anything like you know open it up to discussion items and see how like you know or, or, or what others experience has been in this area like you know engaging with students and so on. I'm Steve Hathaway and I was a mentor for Google Summer of Code 2012 for the Apache Xerxes project. No, the Exalum project. And the student was an undergraduate in, the, in Brazil. We had a good time. One of the things that kept him motivated was offering the necessary research papers and guidance to, so that he had the necessary background to be productive in his project with open source. Uh, without providing him the necessary uh, background in what a time continuum was, what a calendar, calendar was, and the various types of calendar systems, and the specification of date-time infrastructures as uh, defined in the W3 uh, schema specs, he would not have been proficient in his research, but he accomplished well his Product is being integrated into the uh, Zalon project, and it looks like a lot of it will be incorporated into the next release. I am also a mentor at Oregon State University outside of the Apache projects. 
the students there in the computer science are very, very enthusiastic. Anything open source, they want to absorb like a sponge. They want to be able to participate. They have their own projects. One of the things that I'm trying to do is to help identify to their project leaders and managers and administrators at the university the open source tools that are available that, to help them with their research projects. They could be Apache open source tools. They could be uh, OpenSQL for uh, security libraries, etc. But anything that you can share with them improves their enthusiasm for getting involved in the open source community. And it also it helps the instructors know what the open source and Apache way is all about. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. I think like you know, that's uh, very, very encouraging to hear those kind of stories and especially like you know, the potential of it. And I guess like you know, that's been our experience as well. So yeah, I think like you know, time permitting, we should discuss more, go back and more discuss more of this. Yeah. So uh, um, I think a challenge you might have is, I, mean, I don't think anybody who's involved in any of the projects would disagree with the value of everything from improving the documentation to being a GOC mentor. Um, I think you're proposing, though, a specific project uh, to work on. And, and in a way, it's almost a creation of a new sub-community within Apache that would take kind of long-term ownership over a couple of interesting things. And to me, it feels a bit like the um, the, the PR uh, uh, community or the, the infrastructure community, which we've organized as kind of their own projects, right? They have their own mailing lists. They have their dev lists and their community public lists. You know, they've got, uh, 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 you know, ways of operating that have established a good pattern. And so one approach you may want to take is to consider proposing to the incubator a, you know, a, a university project or an education project or something that is chartered with a certain mandate that has a set of um, initial P, you know, PMC members, which would be the two of you, it might be other people from the university or from uh, you know, other places that seem appropriate for this, right? Or other volunteers from the rest of the ASF. But it's an identified list of eight, of eight people, six people, 12, whatever, who take collective ownership over it. Because I think the challenge is, you'll have a lot of volunteers come in, say this is great, and then when it's time to do the hard work, you know, it's hard to depend upon them. Yes. The nice thing with the PMC structure is now here's a group publicly taking responsibility as a whole. You know? And I think that may be what this project needs to get over the hump. The final thing might be, um, there uh, was something announced today called code.org, um, which was Zuckerberg and Bill Clinton and Bill Gates and others saying, you know, that we should teach uh, programming in high schools all over the place. I don't know how much funding they have, but it's a very slick website, so it suggests that they got some funding. Um, this may be something that if you put together a package or a, a really solid vision around, you could pretty easily get funding for people to spend time purely on the development of this as a program. Um, you know, techno you know, geeks, technologists still keeping a, a, the same kind of volunteerism hard as Apache, but giving them the space and resources to do this that people are afforded on Google Summer of Code, for example. For example. Yeah, there's, there's great some, ideas. Yeah. Uh, so good thoughts. Like one thing I want to check by more is like you know, when you said incubator PMC more, uh, but I guess like we'll also get into other things. How does that incubator graduate? Because it's not a software and stuff. So you've been mainly uh, suggesting that for a governance model, like mainly for this kind of. This is a gov uh, This is about how does it organize as a as a project of the ASF. Um, uh, it's it, it's something that entirely could happen within a community of Apache, community dot Apache dot yeah. perhaps. Perhaps that's where it starts. My thought was start in the incubator so you're not short circuiting into the ordinary process around how projects take off. I see, yeah. So that you can attract uh, mentorship you know, uh, from the other ASF members. Uh, but then eventually graduate to a full fledged project you know, when you have your first release you know, or whatever the <laughs> criteria for the incubator PNC would want to set. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know uh, if any other people have thoughts on yeah. how governance might work at Google. Yeah. Yeah, so I would agree with that. I think mean, that that's a, a really good idea. Um, GSOC kind of lives within the com dev, but it's kind of, I don't know, short circuiting within that, you know, or whatever. And typically people within that step up and do things, which is great. But it might make sense to explicitly call out this sort of, you know, sub project related to universities for that. 
because we do a lot of self-organizing in that realm on our own anyways, by talking to one another. I mean, I just got emails from these guys and was like, oh, you want to mentor my student? And I was interested in it because it was an itch I wanted to scratch within the projects I was involved with. You know, and I was like, this is great uh, because it's students and I teach at USC too, and I was like, this is great, you know. This, and so, so it's self-organizing that maybe could be made more formal for your suggestion. So um, the other comment that I had, is there any reason that it should focus on MS students only? Or like, I mean, maybe it could be, you know, I think no. all these projects could end up being, you know, dissertation. Yes, no, no, there is no, what, that's why we put that it could be capstone projects, it could be just undergraduate group projects, okay. MSc projects, PhD, you know. Yeah, yeah, so I think yes. it's exactly yeah. I mean, yeah. We're going to have Dan Katz here from the NSF tomorrow, you know, Suresh got him, and he's going to talk about you know, some of their strategies for like, you know, where they're going with things like this should be a core part of, you know, open source and stuff, you know, from these, from these funding agencies and, and, and everything. So. Um, yeah. Uh, I had one other place, but I got it. So. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Ben. Yeah, all of those are a good point. I think we should yeah, talk sorry. about all of this. Yeah. So I have one question. Um, I don't know if it exists already, but it seems like a great way to tap into these communities is to actually like generate curriculum for those courses at the university. So something on mm -hmm. curriculum on search engines, and then ties to solar or lucene or anything else there. Absolutely. If it presents the problems there, then that would tie directly into these programs. And Absolutely. I'm sure you could ask the solar people what are the issues that you're facing right now, and that would generate the interest around that class. So. Uh, yes, like, I absolutely. Know people, I know there's people out there that have already done this to kind of drive people in their class back to the yeah. yeah, I think like, yeah, that's a great idea. I guess yes. building up, like, even like what as Chris pointed out, you don't need to restrict like yes. for a master for a grant to capstone. Like, they could go become to your dissertations or sometimes into curriculums. Well, just to, yeah. just to touch on, just to touch on Paul's point, I don't know, real quick, trust me, and then I'm leaving it. <laughs> um, yeah, to touch on that, it's like, for a while, I was running Google Summer of Code, and Summer of Code, and CS572 at USC. <laughs> 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 I had, you know, 10 or 15 of my that were just, I was like, hey, you guys, your final project, do you want to contribute to the ASF? You know, I had them doing ICLAs, and you know, that a lot of their stuff made it into things like solar, or Lucene, or various other things. And then I was like, oh, yeah, well, I guess I could get involved with Comdem and Google Summer of the formal way, too. You know, but it, it also struck me as you, there are these little efforts that are doing that as well that don't have to be that way, and they could be better organized. These guys are doing it. Yeah. No, I think, Chris, I guess that's a great point. I guess like the, well, the point is like now, how does one find out about management summer of code? Like I think if we have a place to go, place to go for like you now instead of students fishing around or finding out, I guess that would be a good opportunity, I guess, to wrap it up. Okay, I think we are. Yeah. Time's up. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. For everyone. So.